Welcome to the Nonprofit Report, your update on nonprofit organizations, issues, and leaders. I'm your host, Mark Oppenheim. Today, we're discussing the role of nonprofits in shaping and promoting the cinematic arts with special guests. James Mejia, CEO of the Denver Film Society, and Rebecca Campbell, CEO of the Austin Film Society, and Leslie Kleinberg, the Executive Director of Film at Lincoln Center. So thank you all for joining us. You know, this is just such a great, great part of America and, and of the world. We tell stories through films and we are going through a real golden age in which because of live streaming, the, the uh, barriers between uh, film and television and these mini series that are coming up and the acting and the direction and the cinematography are just really astounding. So let's talk a, a, a little bit about your ecosystems and how important the nonprofit world is. And let's start with you, James, on shaping what we eventually experience downstream, because you're really at the beginning of this whole arc of film development, promoting directors. Uh, you, Rebecca, in Texas, you, you have this uh, whole facility, Lincoln Center, Leslie. But let's start with you, James, in Denver. Could you talk a little bit about how you got into this business and, and talk about the ecosystem surrounding uh, Denver Film. The first thing I would say is that at Denver Film, where I've been an entire year, so just finished my rookie year here, we, we, we think it's important to provide an experience that is transformative, but also reflective of our community. And finally, a catalyst for the community conversations that we need to be having uh, in our community. So we look to educate but we also look to catalyze and, and we use film as a, uh, a medium that is non-threatening to bring people into that conversation, start the conversation, uh, give a, a background and a foundation uh, for, for how the conversation should be framed. But again, very important. And we, we think a responsibility and an obligation to reflect and promote the diversity that we find in our community. So I, I find that to be really interesting as, as a first shot, James, because if you take a look at what's going on right now uh, in other areas, let's take the discussion around critical race theory and, and those kinds of issues, this whole idea of deflecting from discomfort. We're not gonna talk about anything that, that makes anybody uh, uncomfortable. In fact, we're going to create regulations that, that sanction people for raising topics that people find uncomfortable. And James is saying, Rebecca, that Really, what we need to do is engage people in this dialogue, make it exciting, make it engaging, make it perhaps non-threatening, but also not deflect from discomfort. Are you looking at this the same way in, in, in Austin? Oh, yeah, we, we absolutely um, love that our, our cinema is, um, you know, a, a forum and a place where people can gather and exchange ideas. We just had um, a real barn burner last week. It was... Um, uh, guilty until proven innocent, the Michael Morton story, and the, the lawyers were there, and um, the, the discussion went on for an hour afterwards. It, it was, um, you know, just the, the, the exchange of ideas in real time and the way that um, people's minds can get opened um, when they're able to, you know, experience something on the big screen, walk in the shoes of another person, immerse themselves in a really profound and powerful story and, um, and, and engage together. Um, so that's just one example of something that we're completely committed to and passionate about. Could you talk about the Michael Moore story, uh, uh, real uh, Morton story uh, real quick? Oh, if it, I guess if it's, it's not is known maybe outside of Texas as it, as it should be, but Michael Morton was accused of um, murdering his family, um, setting his house on fire and served 25, I believe years um, before the Innocence Project um, took on his case and through DNA was able to um, find the, the, the real culprit and set him free. So 25 years in prison um, for a crime he did not commit that was him losing his family. The thing that I think that is so interesting about film and storytelling is that there, there, there's truth, right? And they're different people's truths. So you have a whole juxtaposition of, of point of view and, and, and fact. 
and point of view can come um, can be relayed through fiction or through document uh, documentary filmmaking. Leslie, how do you select the the range of different stories that you present? Uh, because of course, there are so many different filmmakers. There are so many different stories to tell. You have to make choices. And are you in making that choice? Are you, in a sense, tilting um, what people can experience? Well, I'll just make sure it's clear. I don't. Uh, my, that's not my job. I actually, I'm not a programmer, so I'm not a person who chooses the films. Um, that's what uh, Dennis Lim, who's our director of programming, does, and um, and his team. And um, you know, our our mission is really about supporting film as an art form. Um, and so, you know, our focus is largely in looking at film through that lens, uh, so to speak, no pun intended. Um, and um, right now we are in the midst of the last two, three days of our the 59th New York Film Festival, which we've been having being held live here in New York. Um, so we've actually been experiencing the last uh, uh, 12 or 14 days now, um, sort of this extraordinary feeling, I think uh, Rebecca was kind of getting, uh, you know, alluding to, which are people coming into theaters and seeing these films and our, you know, Alice Tully Hall with, a, with almost 1,100 people has been sold out many, many, many nights. Um, and it's been exhilarating and really exciting and, uh, for a lot of different reasons. But to your point, Mark, it's because I think our team, which is made up of the selection committee for the New York Film Festival is made up of five individuals, but we have consultants around the world um, that are called upon. And I think the stories that we're, we're telling are really from the world cinema and really reaching into different cultures around the world. So you really, um, I, I, I don't get to see as many films during the festival because, you know, as these guys, you don't get to sit down very much when your festival is going on. But um, some of the films that I've been able to see at other festivals or, or in our PNI screenings, um, you know, you can just see the range of, of stories that are being told. We're also open every day of the year. So after the New York Film Festival, you know, we do 12 other film festivals during the year and we show new releases. And so um, at, as James was getting to in terms of our connection to our community, um, you know, it's sort of a constant work that we're doing to just bring bringing in different audiences throughout the year. And um, I th our team this year, for example, that did the talks, um, we did these uh, kind of got a little deeper in some of the talks that we do at the festival and, um, and made them much more available and accessible. And, you know, even though we had them live, we knew that the biggest bump we were going to get is the streaming of those talks. And so for us, even though we've done our festival all live this year and not streamed as we had done last year, um, there are elements that we're able to share with people, you know, across all these platforms, uh, including our Q and A's and, and other other bits that we were able to connect with. You're bringing out a number of different points and, and they're so important. First, that that the selection comes from the artists themselves, the producers, the people who are engaged in film, who understand what is going on in the industry. So there in, in, in many respects, you're you're all being advised by those people who have uh, a personal stake in ensuring that film remains a vital art. It's, it's, that's really important. It's not a commercial endeavor. It's why you are all nonprofits. And then the other thing that I think is really important is the uh, intersectionality of taking audience and having them uh, interact with the, uh, with the artists and really uh, deepening your discussions. How important is film to the American social fabric and to the world's social fabric? Um, is it just an enter, is, you know, just an entertainment or is it more than that, James? Well, it's it, it's for sure entertainment, which, which makes it a, a non-threatening way to, to enter in, into the discussion or dialogue or, or the session of entertainment itself. But it's much more than that. Um, and, and the first thing that, that I would say kind of in, in reaction to, to Leslie's comment is because we have artistic directors and programmers selecting films, it really underscores the importance of, again, going back to a diverse set of uh, eyes on what creates art 
sensibility, <laughs> perspective, you know, lived experience and so on. That diversity is actually creating the rich selections, right? But, uh, absolutely. And, and, and regardless of which team is putting that together, it, it's got to be a team that has, has very different perspectives because only then are you, are you finding all the art, quote unquote. Uh, and, and of course, art is, is different for every single individual. Um, you know, so, so it, it, uh, it, for, for me, it just underscores the importance of, of, of having very different people in on the conversation, ensuring that uh, you have a wide swath of, of perspective, uh, age, ethnicity, gender, gender identity, et cetera. I mean, all, all those things are incredibly important to find all the art because there are stories in, in, in every community. Um, and, and it's important to bring those, those forward. Um, and, it, and it's a complacence retardant, right? We can't be complacent when we are rubbing up against each other. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I think it's what, it, it, it's what makes independent film so special is that we are willing to go outside the boundaries of uh, a traditional blockbuster. And, and our blockbusters in the United States have become so formulaic uh, that I think people have become very appreciative of highly curated film experiences. And that's really where our sweet spot is. We, we bring a diverse set of, of perspective to a diverse set of art and, and find something that you would not be able to find on your own and certainly not be able to celebrate uh, in a, a theatrical community experience on your own. So th- th- there is a sweet spot for, for independent film and, you know, the importance of, of, of that in my opinion, is just growing in this country. Rebecca, you, you have a, a uh, facility there. You, you have a different nature than uh, many uh, film organizations. Could you just describe a little bit about what you're doing and how you are promoting um, Austin and, and the state of Texas as a place for making film? Yes. Um, yeah. Thanks for the opportunity um, to talk about um, this sort of unique um, organization that's evolved over 35 years to kind of fit with um, the community that we're in, because we are actually um, in, uh, involved in the whole ecosystem of film. So we've talked a lot about the exhibition part, um, but there's the industry and um, we would, re- it is part of our vision and mission that Austin could be your career long home as a filmmaker. So what that takes is, um, you know, infrastructure. Um, So we have a 20 acre facility that the city of Austin, um, that we operate in conjunction with the city of Austin. And then um, we we also have a, um, a community media facility, which is essentially public access television um, for, for the for the modern age. Um, so, so you've got your culture, your industry, but then most important is the leading edge is the artists. So that's got to be the renewable resource. And in order for us to keep the artists here, we need both the culture and the industry piece. So we do, um, the AFS grant is at cash to artists and there's nothing more important than that, than, Mm -hmm. than access to capital. And, you know, who, who gets the capital? Um, who, like, it's, I think that, um, it's it's really um, clear, I, I think, more and more um, that there's you know gatekeepers for this industry and um, who decide um, what stories are important and who gets to be represented. And so so it, it, ensuring that that um, is 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 diversified and, and the power is getting spread out. So isn't, it, isn't it a dialogue between the past and the future? Right. We, we always have gatekeepers who started off as the independent filmmakers, right? The, the Charlie Chaplins in the early days, then, you know, you have United Artists with, with he, Mary Pickford, and so on and so forth. And then they become, those companies become the gatekeepers. And then you have independent filmmakers coming up who, who are going to be the future gatekeepers, but they're destroying the, the, the gates so that they can penetrate the, the industry. So you're basically creating this, this, uh, this entryway to challenge the conventions and, and the conventional power, aren't you? Yes, exactly. And the connectivity also, um, making sure that there's lots of different crossroads. I think that's one of the most fun and exciting things about what we do is um, all sorts of different people 
um, meet each other at the cinema and at the community media facility and at the studio. And then that's our job. You talked about fabric and I had this sort of cynical thought of what fabric. And I, I thought, no, 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 don't, don't go there because when there was a more solid fabric in America, it was also more homogeneous. And so it's a very exciting time where the, the possibilities of um, collaboration, I think collaboration is a huge sort of buzzword these days. And um, so that's a really exciting piece of it as well. In terms of, of the art of creating uh, pictures, uh, 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 moving picture stories, Leslie, I'm really interested in the idea of what that, what film is, what cinema is today. Because if you start to look at what has happened through social media and through these production companies that have come together and through sort of the different forms that we have, being able to start creating films through our, our mobile devices, for example, I'm wondering how you define the art today because it is so difficult because there's so many different formats from the really, really short elements to the really long multi-part series elements. Um, how are you, you looking at this? Are you looking at, at feature films uh, only of, of whatever, 120, uh, 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 you know, 100 minutes to, to, uh, to 150 minutes? Or are you uh, also including serialized elements? Um, how, how do you look at this? Well, I would say that uh, it's not for us to define the art exactly. You know, obviously, as we said, it's very, it's subjective. Um, but, I, you know, our programmers and Dennis in particular uh, is open to many different forms and formats. Um, in fact, our current section of the New York Film Festival is devoted to that very idea of pushing the limits of film. Um, so we last night, even in Alice Tully Hall, we showed a feature film, but it was 73 minutes. Um, La Petite Maman. But I think that it's... Um, well, I guess we, we have always embraced um, avant-garde film, um, experimental film at, at Film at Lincoln Center and Film Society at Lincoln Center. Amos Vogel was one of the founders of the New York Film Festival. Um, so, you know, I think that uh, in New York, of course, uh, we're not the only place to see films. There are many places to go um, and experience also different kinds of and aspects of the film, of, of film. And if you can go to MoMA and you can go to Film Forum, but you can go to BAM and you can go to uh, Alamo Draft House for that matter. Um, so I think that, um, you know, the, the experience of going to, to the theaters is the thing that I think we're all looking at and trying to kind of figure out about, you know, we were nervous about the New York Film Festival for all the reasons that we could enumerate, you know, number one being COVID. And yet we've had basically sold out screenings um, with people wearing masks, um, people showing their vaccine cards and no, no one having a problem, you know, just because they know that's what it takes to put it on. So that experience of being in the theater, I think people have been very hungry for. Such a great point. Are, 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 are you taking a different um, approach to creating this sort of communal experience? Uh, you know, you talked about the live stream uh, pieces. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, the in theater pieces and so on. Are you evolving at Lincoln Center? And then, and then we're going to we'll go to you, James, and to you, Rebecca. Are you evolving how you're looking at the audience interaction to create uh, for example, mobile experiences, right? Where where I could be um, sitting wherever and just, you know, checking in and be part of the the whole experience. How are you how are you dealing with that? Well, I would say like over the last five to six years, we have or we had been developing different digital platforms. Um, and so we were we, you know, we've been very involved in social media and very involved in live streaming and posting material to YouTube. Um, but obviously during COVID, things changed 
and change very quickly in terms of a real kind of digital platform where we could present films. And so we, we work pretty closely with the, our, our colleagues at Sundance and Toronto and other festivals. And, you know, there's a lot of really great collegiality amongst um, the film societies and organizations uh, around the country and around the world. And people really tried to help each other figure out what we could do. And we, you know, we used a platform that then Toronto, you know, Toronto used it first, we used it and then Sundance and every person kind of learned a little bit more as we went along. Um, and so what I would say, like last year, Mark, during COVID, we really had to pivot, right? Just like everyone did, um, showing films online as, as best we could, engaging the audience in Zoom Q&As, um, you know, trying to bring people in. And I think that was you know, last year's New York Film Festival, uh, which was done all streaming, um, we reached viewers in 50 states and some territories that I don't know what they are, but I was told and territories, but I'm, I'm not sure what that means. Um, I mean, we used to know, we used to talk about getting off of 65th Street. It wouldn't it be nice if we could just move off of 65th Street. That would be great, <laughs> you know. Um, and in one year, we had drive-ins around the city, and I'm sure with all the stuff that you all have done, you know, we're no exception. It's just we just I'm telling you our story, but I think that if, we're very fortunate because we have theaters. Uh, that we operate all year, not Alice Tully Hall, of course. Um, and we have a film center. And I really do like to think of ourselves as a hub of film culture in a sort of vir virtual and a real in real life way, um, because we want people to come. We've been having talks, opening up our doors again, getting people in there. We have a cafe. We're trying to engage people in different ways. But the festival, I'll just say one more thing, which is just that we couldn't have had a New York film festival like we did last year because the distributors and the studios didn't want all their films streamed when our theaters were open. So, you know, we, we, we decided at a certain point we can't negotiate each film, which is what we had to do individually last year. I'm sure Rebecca and James can talk about that. Um, and, but we just decided because it was so clear that we weren't going to get the opportunity to do this across the whole slate that we just weren't going to do it. And some people were really mad at us about that, but it really wasn't in our control. Um, but the, the real life in real life experience has been kind of the most exhilarating, you know, 12 days I've had probably. <laughs> James, um, we've done, uh, we, we completed a couple polls. Um, the first poll, which I thought was really fascinating, um, we got um, a, a over 90% response. We asked, are films my, my primary form of entertainment or secondary? What's interesting was that twice as many people characterized film as their secondary form of entertainment. Um, so 64% versus 27%. But I thought that was really interesting. Which, which bespeaks a, a shift in how people are consuming stories and the format in which they're consuming them. And the second poll was also very interesting. Um, we asked whether theaters are relevant. 55%, I didn't think that it was gonna be this high. 55% said yes. And, and, um, and 45 said, well, somewhat, but really I can watch these, these, these films at home. How is all of these, how, how are these dynamics uh, shifting what you do, how you organize, the people you hire? You know, we talked also about diverse stories. We don't want to just have, as Rebecca said, uh, sort of a, a generic American story. We want to have textured American stories. How are these shaping um, your organization and how do you think these organizations are going to evolve in the future so that we can engage everybody in yeah. the different ways and different ethnicities, different groups, different lived experiences. How do we do this? Well, for, first of all, like, like Leslie, I think most uh, film organizations had to pivot in some regard in order to diversify their revenue streams. It was a survival issue, right? Well, I, I, absolutely. Uh, either the silver lining in the COVID environment is that you had to be more introspective and think about why you were doing things and how you were doing things. We also came up with a series of drive-ins. We also went virtual. And frankly, those are two tools in the toolbox that now will stay with us in perpetuity. Um, so our, our film festival is November 3rd through the 14th here in Denver. We're a regional film festival. 
And, and two things from this conversation. Num- number one, we're going to keep the virtual platform this year, even though it was 100% virtual last year. Of our 233 films, 40 will also be available virtually this year. Rebecca, and are you doing the same thing? Are you keeping your virtual platforms just as Leslie uh, uh, indicated and James just <laughs> said? Not, not, not as vigorously, but you have to think about us being year round. Um, so, so it's, it's, it's a very minor piece of it. Um, but, uh, but the thing that, that I think is obvious for, with all three of us is that um, it's the ability to engage via zoom. That is such a game changer. Like next week we're um, premiering um, the documentary Todd, Todd Haynes's film, the, not documentary, the Vel- velvet underground. So we'll have Todd Haynes, but virtually having a talk back with our um, founder and artistic director, um, Richard Linklater. So that is going to be a really nice, um, you know, it's just, it's, it's a habit now to, to talk by zoom. Um, and so James, I'm sorry I cut you off. Yeah, um, sorry, James. I just wanted to create some, some cross talk. Okay. Go, go no. ahead. Yeah, I, I agree with Rebecca. I think, I think zoom it has, has brought a whole new wrinkle into this where we can reach directors and, and, and actors in a, in a whole new way. The, the, the other point I, I was going to make is that the difference between series, television, film is really becoming blurred. And, and I think every region is dealing with that differently. Um, series was so large in Denver that we spun off a series fest. And now they are becoming their own 501c3. When we have talent come in or want to show series, we always partner with them. And in, the, in, their, in their festival, when they have films or feature films, they'll partner with us. And so there's a lot of camaraderie, but how each region is dealing with these blurring of lines is, is really different. It's, it's just amazing. And it's not only that, it's, it's, it's the graphic novels that then become an animated series, that then become a live action series. You have Hamilton being shot in, in a way that is just so cine- it's, it's cinematic. Right. And it's a live performance. You have uh, Ben Donenberg over at the Shakespeare Center in in Los Angeles doing these amazing. There's this Macbeth uh, performance uh, that also creates educational opportunities. We're we're doing work with all sorts of organizations where there's so many lines that are being being blurred between uh, documentary and fiction and these different art forms. Uh, How do we um, shape an organization like yours, Rebecca? to accommodate the creativity that is exploding through the the entire field? Are we, are we going to create a bunch of spinoffs? Are we evolving um, how you function within Texas? Are we evolving how you function within Denver, James, and Leslie in New York? I, I think that um, AFS has it good in the sense that we're also involved in um, production. Uh, we're facilitating it. We're not we're not doing it, but we're, we're facilitating it. So if you, if you think about the, the business model, um, because we, we know being in the arts and being a nonprofit is just built in really, really tough. Right. Um, so we have got um, that going on and therefore really have not had to do much in the way of pivoting. And even before COVID, I think that we used to say, oh gosh, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting to be a dinosaur and, and watch the, the, the art form s- sinking, but we are literally built to be the place where people will always be able to find that magic. So um, if anything, I would say we're just more of what we always were. So I'm going to kick it. We're, we're coming to the end of our time. I kick it to you, Leslie, and then James, I'm going to give you the last word. I just want to point out something that was really fascinating. We just finished another poll. This is just really terrific. We, we asked, why do we watch films? And we asked people to, to uh, give us two answers. And here's the really interesting part. Um, the actors involved got 13%. Uh, the experience of community also got 13%. Here are the top three answers. Top answer was entertainment and storytelling value, right? The whole idea of just being entertained by stories, being transported. The second most was, and this is interesting, the art, the techniques, the cinematography, the, 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 the sound tech, you know, and that really bespeaks, you know, how do you create that experience that shares that, that art, the technology 
uh, and the, and and these these approaches that these masters uh, have with the audience. Um, and then the third area was was uh, learning 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 history, culture, cultural education, and so on and so forth. It really shows the power of the art side, doesn't it, Leslie? Well, I definitely think so. And I think speaking to your point earlier is that, you know, film has become our culture, really. Film culture is our culture. And, you know, there's so many things about our culture that are tied to uh, this medium and this idea of storytelling. And as you said, it's evolved, it's changed somewhat. I mean, we, we don't show serialized um, series, you know, or rather uh, you know, projects at the New York Film Festival, but it's not like we've never shown that at Film at Lincoln Center. That would be silly, right? Um, and some of the most interesting and dynamic uh, filmmakers are working in many different kinds of fields and mediums. But I think, you know, we, we want to lean into the people that are um, interested in, you know, the variety of stories that, um, you know, that film can tell in the variety of ways it can tell it. And so, as we, as I said in the beginning, we, you know, we celebrate the art and craft of cinema. That's in our mission. Um, and when you can sit with the filmmakers um, and sit with the cinematographers and hear them talk about their experiences, uh, it's, it's very, very meaningful. And I think inspiring. Um, and I hope in a realistic way, which is to say that this is a, these are crafts that people are in and their professions and not about being famous or for nothing. And it's not, it, I do want to, you know, we're not doing TikTok videos, right? We're not showing those, but I think, you know, there, you have to also be open to all the different ways. I think that young people in particular are experiencing media and, you know, I look to my kids and I think, well, how are they looking at things? They know better than to watch a movie on their phone because they they would get in trouble from me one of the things that i find so um so fascinating about our work is that we i mean we we recruited the uh, head of the afi uh, conservatory um we recruited the chief fundraiser for the academy uh, museum of motion pictures this is a industry that does not stand still and you you are uh, an experimental nexus right where you can bring together the artists and the audiences and, and um, you, through your nonprofit activities, you're, you're providing this sort of neutral platform, aren't you, James? How do you see this developing? You've just been there for a year, but can you see the future already? Well, no, no question. And, and I think Rebecca brought up a very important word and that is the magic. And, and part of that magic is having a communal experience. Uh, that's part of it. Uh, another part is recognizing the art uh, and uh, finding art in a highly curated form, um, and, and having having that that experience in a physical facility, I think always makes us relevant. And and as these lines get blurred, we are the place, the physical place that people will always come for some of that magic. And that's why I think independent film that continues to push boundaries will will always be relevant. So. Uh, a pleasure to be involved in it. I see it uh, evolving uh, daily. Um, and and uh, I, it, it, Leslie mentions the, the next generation. For my kids, it doesn't matter what, who produced it or what form it's in. If it's available on a, a phone and they like it and they're entertained or educated, they're going to watch it. And so we're at the beginning of this evolution, certainly not the middle or the end. Being able to roll with the times and a lot of these innovations are coming from the artists who are independent filmmakers who are challenging past practice and creating new practice, creating the new conventional wisdom that in turn will be challenged. James Mejia, CEO of Denver Film, Rebecca Campbell, CEO of the Austin Film Society, and Leslie Klamberg, Executive Director of Film at Lincoln Center. Thank you so much for sharing your work with us. Thank your staff, thank your artists, thank your independent filmmakers. Thank your audiences and thank your funders. Have a great day. Everyone stay safe and we'll see you next Tuesday. Thank you. Thanks so much.